There's my truck. And here's the TA. We're just over the border into Wisconsin from Minnesota. This is where we stopped last night. Welcome everybody. Please subscribe and stick around if you haven't already. We make new videos every day while I'm on the road. I travel across Canada and the United States. I'm from Southeast Manitoba, Canada. That's just above Western Minnesota. We're on our way down to Bristol, Indiana. I got a load to pick up there and bring back up to Canada. First, we need a coffee. years. set for my day. Are you set for yours? Buckle up because it's going to be, uh, what did we say last night? We figured out the miles. It was about 880 kilometers to Bristol. That's 560 miles, right? That's what we figured out yesterday. It'll be a full day. I've got nothing on the trailer. I don't get paid when there's nothing on the trailer. I get paid by the load. So we got to make sure that the load I pick up pays for all these empty miles as well. So it's a bit of a hike, but we have to take care of some freight that we have sitting there. It needs to get picked up and get brought back. I'm the man for the job. Gotta do what we gotta do. Let's get out there, let's burn some diesel fuel. I said it before too, that empty miles are not exactly chased after. We don't like all the empty miles. But if it's worth it, we'll go get it. Since I'm a Canadian citizen, I cannot pick up freight in Minnesota. Because that's where we dropped off our load yesterday, right? We dropped it off in Minnesota. And my reload is in Indiana. Now, the tricky thing about that... Oh, my coffee's leaking a little bit. Ah, shoot. So I just have to drink it. The tricky thing about that is that I'm not allowed to pick up freight from Minnesota here or Wisconsin here and bring it down to Indiana to get to my next load that's taking me back to Canada. It's called interstating. Very illegal. Comes with huge fines. If a Canadian company attempts that and they get caught, they may as well just shut their doors. You cannot do that. Biggest reason why, and it's the same thing in Canada, an American citizen who comes up to Canada to deliver freight can't deliver in Winnipeg and then pick up a load in Winnipeg, deliver it to Calgary, and then pick up a load in Calgary, go back down to the US. That would be stealing a job. If I pick up a load in Minnesota, taking me down to Indiana, that is a load that should be hauled by an American driver. That would be stealing an American job. I wouldn't be very happy if a nice, good paying load got stolen from me from an American driver going from Winnipeg to Calgary that I could have taken. See, that's, that's the way the two countries, that's the way our treaty works between the two countries. I can, I can pick up freight in Canada, deliver it into the US. Then I have to pick up a load that's going directly back to Canada. So my reload can be far away. I can go empty down to Florida and pick up a load in Florida if I want to and bring it back to Canada. But I gotta pay for all those empty miles and all those taxes, road taxes to get down there. And so it better be a really, really good paying load for that. But the point is, I'm going down to Indiana to pick up a load that's direct Canada bound. 
So I'm gonna go back there, bring it right back to Canada, and that's the way it works. I go back and forth from Canada to the United States. I live just like 60 miles over the border into Canada. You may as well just call me American. I live in Western Canada, so we're more Americanized on our side of the province. Canada sort of started in Ontario and Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, out east, right? They have more of that Canadian identity out there. Out here in the West, sure, we have Canadian identity, we're proud to be Canadian, but at the same time, we're very, very close to our American friends next door. We love America. You couldn't tell us apart, really. Like, you look at me, if you didn't know, if I didn't tell you I was Canadian, and I told you I was like from Wisconsin, right? Or I was from North Dakota. What reason would you have not to believe me, right? It's we speak the same language, we have the same accent, we have the same culture, we celebrate the same holidays, except we do our Thanksgiving a month earlier because we get snow in November. And uh, having your Thanksgiving in November is just way too close to Christmas. That's two big family get-together holidays back to back. Just spread them out a little bit, have one in October, one in December. That's the only really difference that we have. We have a shared history with the United States and out west, the expansion west of the United States and the expansion west of Canada sort of happened around the same time. They were sort of competing there. We share that history as well. Sure, our governments are very close and our history is different slightly, but all in all, we're good friends. We're brothers and we're sisters with our neighbors next door. And uh, I love coming down here to visit. I mean, I live just 60 miles over the board, just barely Canadian. I'm just barely Canadian. You guys want to adopt me? <laughs> All my Canadian friends are going, hey, 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 he's ours, he's ours. Maybe they don't want me either. Maybe Canada's like, good, you can have him. You can have Josh, I don't want him. I don't know how they feel about me. <laughs> I'm just messing around, I'm just messing around. Let's get, let's get on the road here and uh, let's go get uh, some miles behind us. Like I said, let's go burn some diesel fuel. And the reason why I would say us in Western Canada are a little closer to uh, the US to be to, to Americans than we are to Eastern Canada because Eastern Canada to us in the West is Southern Ontario, like Toronto, Grand, Greater Toronto area, Southern Toronto, East. And that part of the country is the original Canada. That's where Canada started. And then it expanded West right to where we are. And between where we are on the Eastern edge of the West in Manitoba, like I live right on the edge of Western Canada Everything east of there, there is nothing there for a two-day drive till you get down to the population centers of eastern Canada. A two-day drive through a little two-lane road, you've seen it many times, Highway 17 or Highway 11, two days to get to the other part of Canada. Whereas America is just 60 miles away. We can go to Fargo, we can go to Minneapolis. Minneapolis is only seven hours away from Winnipeg. Like we got Fargo, North Dakota is like three and a half hours away from us. We got the US access to the US right next door to us, right? So we spend a lot more time with our American friends than we do with our Eastern friends because they're just so far away out East. And cultural lines in North America, you'll notice, run North-South. They don't run East-West. They drew the border, the international border, East-West, right? But the cultural lines along the entire continent run North-South. You got the East Coast culture and politics, you got the Midwest culture and politics, and you got the West Coast culture and politics. It's exactly the same in Canada as it is in the US. The cultural lines run north-south. So I am indistinguishable from a Midwestern American in many ways, except for I talk a little, a little quirks in my language where I say a eh, here and there and I call everybody bud. And I don't say y'all, I say you guys. There are little things like that, but if you look at me and you hear me talk for 10 seconds, you'd be like, oh yeah, that guy's probably from like South Dakota or North Dakota or Minnesota, you know? We're gonna grab fuel in Black River Falls, Wisconsin. So, we're gonna go down the list here till we find Black River Falls in the GPS. Right there, exit 116, I-94, Wisconsin, add as via, add to start. That's where we're gonna. Proceed to the highlighted route. 182 kilometers. Proceed to the highlighted route. Arrival time. Show me the arrival to Flying J. 182. So that's about two hours. So we're looking at about 110 miles. 
it's gonna be good. So I'm gonna back up a little bit here and turn around in this lot and go back out the way I came. Let's get her done. So Flying J of Black River Falls, Wisconsin has the uh, cheapest fuel on my road. be a good day and feel it Very nice. Not very nice. Now I gotta wait. In 200 meters, take the entrance to the left on I 94 East. when he would come with me. 
and when his uh, when his back hips were in a lot better shape. He's an old man now. Approaching destination in 300 meters on the right side. last time remember that it was so full Over you here. have arrived at your destination on the right side flying j travel plaza flying j was all packed up when we went and parked over there by that driveway last time we went down to bristol that was last month i think right uh, quickly fill up the tanks and be on our way Fueled up here, fueled up for 129 US gallons, 488 liters. Uh, my price was $1.16 per liter after all conversions and everything said and done. For comparison, back home, uh, average price is about $1.30 to $1.40 a liter. It's way cheaper down here. Uh, it was $3.18 USD per gallon. So it costed me $410 US or $566 Canadian. And on my last fuel up, uh, between fuel ups I averaged 39 Canadian cents per kilometer or 63 Canadian cents per mile. Uh, and that was because most of it was empty. Uh, I've seen as high as a dollar a mile. Uh, when, I'm, when I was hauling that load from Calgary, remember? I hauled that load from Calgary all the way out to the Toronto area there, uh, near Kitchener, Ontario. The whole trip, my cost of fuel was about a dollar per mile. That was, oh, that load dragged me down. It was heavy, it was a big parachute behind me, it cost a lot of money to pull that across the country. Uh, so uh, it fluctuates a lot, depending on what load we have, right? So once I'm loaded, that uh, cost per mile will go up quite a bit but since I have just a skateboard behind me there's no real wind resistance I can just slip through the wind right it's one good thing about being empty you're not making any money but at least you're spending less I guess <laughs> but yeah uh, that averaged uh, 34.51 liters per hundred kilometers and 6.8 miles per gallon that's my stats. Let's get back there out on the road. We got a long way to go yet. I just talked to the shipper. Uh, they're gonna let me park in their yard overnight, which is nice. That's a privilege. They don't always allow people to park in the yard there because some people who have picked up there have decided that uh, the surrounding area around their truck is a toilet for number two. No words. Come on, guys. And. We know what happened. These were uh, Canadian trucks that came down. So whenever they have a Canadian truck coming down, they're uh, picky about who parks there, right? So someone messed it up for everybody else. They had Canadian plates and uh, well, we all know what happened there. Let's get back out on the road. We're lucky we can park right there so we can wake up in the morning, get loaded get out of there and start moving back home. All filled up. We will swing back past here again on the way back. It'll be just, just about time to fuel by the time we get back here. We're looking at about seven hours of driving ahead of us today yet. That's if we don't hit any traffic in Chicago. We can only hope. Hope and pray.
headed to Illinois. In 500 meters, shoot to the left on I-39. I think I'm going to pull into the Flying J up here. Uh, if I haven't missed it already. I thought it was exit 1, but... First, we got to go under this toll. Pay the easy pass toll. It's just a short this little, road uh, for 22 kilometers. short stretch of the toll road I'm going on here until the 39 splits off in about 15 miles. And they have my money now. How about that? I might have missed my turn. Because I think it was exit 1 and I'm already at mile marker 3. Oh, shoot. Well, it's okay. I, I just wanted to stop for a coffee. I'll stop at the next place on the 39. Not a big deal. We're about halfway done our day. I have about another four hours of driving to do. But we actually got about four and a half hours, five hours behind me already. So we're a little over halfway there. Continue on this road for 29 kilometers. No, I'm going to turn into Love's. South of Rockford, Illinois, on I-39. Quickly swing in here, grab a quick coffee, and be on our way. I don't want to stop much until we get there. I want to get there as early as possible because I need to be able to make sure I can get my 10 hours in there before, you know, having to get going in the morning. On the road again. I love these roads just through the plains, through the prairies. It feels so much like home. Way better than going through the city. If I had gone that way, I would have paid a bunch of tolls by now, and I'd be stuck in traffic. No thank you. Look at what I get to drive on instead. I'll take the longer road. Look at this. Beautiful. I don't want to really stop more than I have to now. It's going to be about four hours yet until we get to our destination. And I don't want to delay that any more than I have. So only bathroom breaks now. Just go, go, go till we get there. Well, going through the tip of Chicago, not too bad. Other than the rain, the traffic is uh, moving along pretty good. You get the odd person here and there who seems to have never taken a shower in their life because they're terrified of water. But you know, you get around them and then they mess up traffic behind you. But man, all it takes is one person in a city this big to be scared of the water and to be in like one of the middle lanes driving half the speed limit and it messes up traffic behind them for miles. But thankfully, that hasn't been too big of an issue today. Coming up to Indiana, look at that. There it is. Crossing border, entering Indiana. 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 So we're actually going to avoid the toll road of I 90, save some money, and take US 20 instead. Hey buddy, uh, you gotta pick your lane or my lane. There you go. I need my lane. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go up uh, 94, past where the 90 splits off. That's the toll road. A little bit past there to exit 40, A. 40 and the letter A. That's US 20. We're gonna take US 20 east around the south side of South Bend. And that'll take us around to the south side of Bristol, Indiana. And we can avoid that whole toll section. You know me, if I don't have to give the toll man my money, he's not getting my money. It's my money. We made it. With an hour and... I don't know why I do that. I like... <laughs> you guys do that too if you guys wear glasses? If you're trying to see something better, you're like... Wait, wait, wait. 
Ah, there we go. It's like you're trying to see clearer and then whatever. Maybe I'm just tired. I do that all the time though. I'm like, I think I can see clearer if I take my glasses off. And I was like, what, are the, what am I thinking? Everything's, there you go. I don't, my eyes aren't that bad, but at nighttime they're worse. But with glasses, it just makes everything a little sharper like that. Just, you know, HD. So I don't know why I constantly think I can see better without them. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. We're in Bristol, Indiana. Maybe I'll put a, a map on the screen here. If it's not here, it's probably at the beginning of the video. So you know approximately where I am. Hour and 46 minutes left on my clock, so I have plenty of time. Um, right here in the yard, right where they're gonna load me in the morning. So I'll wake up, go outside, they'll load me up, tie it down, and we'll be on our way. I actually took US 20, like I was saying, to get here to avoid I-90. It actually worked just fine. It was like 65 mile an hour most of the way, a four lane divided. Went through a few towns, but it was nighttime, so there wasn't much traffic. But I'm gonna go back that way as well to also save uh, tolls on the way home. So that was exciting when I found a way around the toll road. I always love finding ways around the toll road. Man, you put up a toll road and it's like a challenge to me. You put a toll on a road and it's in my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna win this. You're not getting my money. I'm gonna find another way that's just as fast or slightly slower, but cheaper. I'll see you all tomorrow, everybody. I'll uh, show you what I'm loading up here in the morning. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna head back home. Please stay safe out there on the roads. Take care, use your turn signals. I'll see you then. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. It's the best way to support me. 